you work for the post office, I'm sorry, this, but this is this is the way I've got away with it for years. Too many people put too much uh, emphasis on the on, on the wiring. Right. In that it, you know, they're frightened of it. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's not frightening at all. It's just plain bog simple. You've just got to feel that contact, feel it. Yep. Contact, contact, contact. If you've got contact, it works. If you ain't, it don't. So no matter what it bloody looks like, if it works, so your aim is to get great contact. And that's always been my sort of... Motto. Right. I mean, what I'm doing here is the simplest and, and, and quickest way of getting a contact. Just bundling the wires together, twisting them tight, yeah. tinning them and soldering them, and that, that's, that's, got, that's not going anywhere. So I've got two lines there. I'll tidy it up with a bit of a snip. And I'll glue that in after use. This is hot glue and I use to stabilise it all. And this is the DCC bus, yeah? Yeah. These are the droppers. So we can see down on these baseboards, it literally is a pair of wires. Yeah. So it's true, DCC is only two wires. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everywhere. Yeah. Two wires everywhere. Two wires everywhere. Yeah, Just board. not in that order. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, the, the, the simple thing is, again, you can make this hard or difficult. Yeah. But because, in principle, it's only two wires, as long as the boards are connected all the way through, you daisy chain them, you've got a good contact. So the real contact you want is from your rails because at the end of the day, your pickup is from the wheels on your loco. Yes. So therefore, these are the most important pickups. These, you know, you're screwing in, but these, you want good contact so that, that you know that the wire is not faulty. Yeah. You know, you can get dirty rail, but you know that this is not faulty. And this is mains cable, is it? Is it two and a half mil mains cable or something? That is, yeah, and we just yeah. strip it yeah. out of, a, out of the, the armour plating and then we just pull it back and get, um, you know, get, a con um, get a piece we can solder onto. And it's not expensive then, is it? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit more expensive oh. than... It's gone up quite dramatically since we started this. Right. Uh, since we started making tracks one, it's gone up quite a lot. Um, but, you know, it's still, you know, I thought oh, one time I was going to use PCB board and do it all that way. And then you go, it all starts adding up. More to go wrong as well. Yeah. And so, you you know, so all you need is a good solder. This is Phil Super Solder. It, oh. is, it, it is fantastic. Oh, chip quick. Yeah, I know it. It's just fantastic. A decent solder. A good heat. Keep the tip clean. On it goes. Add a bit more solder to make sure there's plenty on there. And there is. Nice shiny joint. You've got a brand new, bang, bang on joint. It ain't going yeah. anywhere, is it? No. Nope. Just dress your ends so they're all roughly the same. And again, you can, you can, I've seen people get really, you know, start putting terminal blocks in and all sorts of things. Yeah, you can do that, but the trouble is with, with a terminal block, the screw gets loose, you've got a loose contact. Yes. Well, if you twist them together, <laughs> they ain't going anywhere, are they? No. It's, it'd be obvious if it's a fault. Yeah. <laughs> these, these are strippers here. These are my wire strippers. Right. I've had these for six, 55 years. They, so they're, they're not metric, then? <laughs> they're not metric. No. I still... I, I could get accused of sealing them from the GEC, but being as the GEC ain't been in existence for about 50 years, I think I'll get, a, I think I'll get away, away with it. it. Yeah. yeah. Chalk that one up. Yeah. They twist them together. So obviously on this one you've got three wires. Now I'll show you something else. Okay. Uh, I'll just tin this. This solder, by the way, is fantastic. It really is. Is it leaded or unleaded to use? I, I use leaded solder. Um, I can use a leaded solder, but I just happen to have this back, you know, from 10 years ago. 
I use leaded on all my personal projects. Yeah. But I have to use unleaded by law for anything that is yeah. for sale. Yeah. Yeah, well, again, it, you know, there's a myth about unleaded solder, you know. It, it's, you know, it, to be honest, it, it's as good as leaded solder if you've got heat and you've got flux. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's at the end of the day, isn't it? I like that it melts at a lower temperature, the leaded. Yeah. And you get that nice shine when yeah. you've done the joint, whereas yeah. unleaded's a bit more dull, isn't it, with the tin? Yeah. And of course, it's on all electrical goods that are sold to the public, really. Yeah. I've never quite get how you would suck a washing machine, but there you go. I'm sure some European legislation had uh, covered that. This, by the way, is not... This is quite interesting, this this wire, because obviously it, it looks to be copper. Right. I don't think it is. I think it's steel copper coated, which is white. It takes a while to get the heat, which is quite thick, to get the heat into it. It's not aluminium then? No, I, th I think it's, I think it's steel. Okay. I think. And then all I do is... Tin the iron. Tin the iron, on your finger usually. <laughs> Best place to tin it. Put the joint on and literally add solder. Now obviously when you're putting two wires together you need a bit more heat. So you just need to be a bit, hold it a bit longer. Or not at all, whichever the case is, there it is. Now that ain't going anywhere. No, nope. that ain't going anywhere. It's robust, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So then, what I do, purely as a tidy up exercise again, mm -hmm. because you know this layout's only going in, into being existence probably a year as a working layout. I just tidy it up by putting a bit of tape, a bit of masking tape, keep the wires. And this is a Daveism, by the way. Stop them dangling. This is to stop Dave moaning that it's getting in the way of his screws when he's screwing his board together. <laughs> <laughs> purely, purely a Davies on that. Oh well. Right now then, I've made a cock up here. Oh. What have I missed? I've missed a bloody black wire. There. It's only two wires, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> How did I do that? Talking. One, two. Yeah, talking. All right. I mean, again, it's it's. I mean, I would rather not cut it before. I... I like to do them longer than trim them. Yeah. Yeah, I find that the best way, but... Well, the need, when needs must, the devil drives, as they say. These are... And there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of talk about soldering. Mm -hmm. Now, I've done it all my life because that's what I'm at, how I yeah. made my living. For a long time with soldering, your soldering iron is the most important thing. Yep. If you've got a cheap soldering iron, you're running into trouble before you start. Mm. You don't have to buy one like this, which is, the, the, these Ursus are absolutely fantastic. Mm. I mean, I've had them now over 20 years and they've never let me down. But if you buy a, a cheap one, then don't it to do, expect it to do the same, because it won't. And don't expect it to last a lifetime either, because it won't. I, um, I bought a Weller soldering station. Great. Cost me nearly £800. Yeah. Um, but I've made over 10,000 boards on it. Yeah, no, no, no. Weller's fantastic. Um, it's heavy. The iron is tiny. But because it's lead-free, so I'm running at high temperature, I think I solder it 380, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I do go through bits like nothing, you know, I do two bits a month. Well, that's because it's your acid. Yeah. In the flux. Right. Um, that's, that's unavoidable. Now, what I tend to do, which is what you're supposed to do, but you mm. can see I'll use my fingers to do mm. it. You're supposed to have a damp sponge. Yeah. That cleans the acid off. And, mm. and see, I've been soldering mm. before there were electric soldering lights. Right, yes. And I started starting it in telephone exchanges. They were copper bits. Right. And you put them in an oven. Yeah. And you got them up, then you tinned it, and then you started yeah. to solder. So 
you know. Like you would if you were rolling sheet metal and soldering it all that Yeah, stuff. yeah, I mean, that's what we used to do. And, you know, we had these ovens on stands that you used to have to keep hot, so were electric ovens. And, you know, you, you just used to go along, and as I said, it was a block of copper with a point on, and every time you, you would have to tin it before mm. you started soldering. And you'd get about 10 minutes out of one one heat before you had to put it back in the oven. Oh, so it had quite a heat reservoir. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing, is I have to use the appropriate bit for the job if I am doing thicker pins. Yeah, well, you're doing, you're doing circuit boards, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. So, I may have forgotten it, but it's now corrected. Brilliant. So, let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's... We'll just put a piece of tape over it. Job done. Yeah. And yes, you, you know, you can, you can be and say, well, a bit untidy. No, it's, it's fit for purpose, though, isn't it? Well, it, it ain't going anywhere. And that would be easy to repair if something snagged. Yeah, you can see, look, they ain't falling off. No. They ain't falling off. No. I don't care what anybody says. So, you know, they, it, it, you know, we put the plugs on there, but you can get, you can get into the boards to put the, 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 the boards in, because I know Dave gets really touchy when he, he, he can't get his bloody spanner in. He gets... Yeah. Sort of and of Phil's gone for XT90s to connect the boards as well, which yes, I think he is. that's inspired. That's they're off radio models, and it's a genius idea. It's just yeah. I never thought of it before. Yeah, and I thought you know, we, we, when we put the boards up like this, the problem you've got is now all work has stopped. Mm -hmm. Now I tried to I tried to wire it last week, which I wired making tracks warm on my back. Yeah, underneath, and I just can't do it anymore. I'm too old. You know, my knees just won't take it. You know, you're twisting and yeah. you're twisting your knees. So we've had to turn them up like this. Um, and it's also why we're up now. We've just, Phil's decided he wants to, to wipe, start his wiring, um, get all his wiring in for the signals um, uh, and, and all the points. Yes. So um, I'm away um, for a, a week from uh, Monday. So w when I get back, uh, we'll get some scenic modelling done this weekend, but we're a bit restricted, and, and that's a problem. We are, you know, we are sort of middle February, you know, and I know, it's, you know, as Dave keeps telling me, June's a long way away. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. <laughs> no, it ain't. You know, it's like, till I see that we've got the bulk done, and it's then all about finishes. Mm. You can't relax. Right. So when we, you know, to, to do this, when Phil said he wanted to do the wiring at the same time, it's a, it's a bit of a sharp intake of breath. It's like, oh. It's got to be done though, hasn't it? It's got point. to be done. And yeah. everything and, wants and to be Phil done. And Phil has now. the same sort of problem as me. He can't, you know, he can't lay on his back for too long. Mm. Um, but No, it's, it's perfect. Get it on its side yeah. and then you're standing upright and you've got full access to the whole board. Yeah, and of course the problem we had with these boards this year, other years only been two foot, right? Mm. Well, that, that's easy. I could turn them on, on myself, you know yes. that one. But now you've got these four foots. Yeah. You can see we've had to block them in. You know we've had to put clamps in to stand them upright so they don't move. Yeah. Because you wouldn't want one of these falling on. I can yeah. assure you. No, and and the light fitting's been removed to make space as well. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, it's, it's, they're, they're big old lumps. I mean, the other thing that's obviously coming more and more into focus now is that we've got to move all this lot. Yes. <laughs> and that's coming, honestly, that is starting to focus quite quite a lot um, because it, it is a big, a big weight. Right. And the biggest challenge we've got is moving all the, all the buildings. Right. Because yes. they are a massive. Packaging. And they're heavy. Yeah. And so, um, you know, where before we've moved the layout as a, as a piece, mm -hmm. you know, we've just moved it, that's going to be impossible to keep. A lot of the buildings can't stay on the layout. They've got to be removed, packed, and, and, and shipped separately. Well, they are the centrepiece, aren't they? Yeah. And the, and the ice, not the ice rink, the, uh, the garage, cool, the weight is... Uh, Enormous. Is it really? Oh, the car park is it weighs it takes two of you to lift it. Because you think, oh, a little bit of MDF or fly and nothing. God, it takes two of you to lift it. Honestly. Mind you, you've glassed it, glazed it, put sand on the roof. 
and all the other bits. And all the floors are in. Mm. Uh, you know, that's, you know... The, you know the, people don't do things my half, you know. Just to, so he's put the blinking floor in, it's like... Is the catenary going to be fixed, or will that remove? Ah, no, that's... You see, that's the other big problem we've got. Right. Because, we, you know, we were talking about this last yesterday. The catenary has to be in. Hmm. which means that all the platform buildings must be fixed. Right. Because you can't take them out. No. Possibly. Because the catenary goes through the roof. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, why this is on its side like this, we can't do that. Hmm. So Aaron's away making all the, 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 the hangers at the moment, but within the next two weeks, we have to put the, those, those platform ones in Mm. So we can start to work out where all the others right. go because we can't. I'll show you. Let me let me just sure chop this. So when I come back in, say three weeks' time to film again another update, yeah. What sort of things will have changed? Do you think? What do you expect to have? In happened? three weeks, we've got to have the platforms in. Right. We've got to, and I'll tell you why. Because if we walk around the other side, mm. you see, this is the way we. We, I used to do the wiring, six dropper, you know, all and then, and then, but that's wasteful. Yes. So you, you, you know, you've got two, four, five wires there, one you can do with two. Yes. Because you can just twist those two together. It's a bus, isn't it? Yes, a bus. Anyway, so if you, obviously that's the middle of the layout. Yeah. And you can see I forgot two droppers. So. That has to split. Yeah. Because that's the middle of the layout, the catenary wire that gets made right. from Pico, mm. the length is 500 mil, that's your longest length. Right. On the railway, that's not uh, that short. Okay. So to keep it looking right, mm. we've had to go and make the wire exactly the same length as on the railway, okay. which is 650 mil. Oh, I heard Aaron talking yeah, about this so last... this piece of wire here... Yeah. ...between there and there is 650 50, mil. Yeah. OK, and it, so when you see the building and you see a picture, it looks exactly the same. Right. There's no compromise. Right. So the building is right with the, with the... Then what you have to do is all the other masts, which, of course, you're now on 500 mil, you're back to 500 mil, you're not going to make all 650 mil. That Aaron would never... You know, he'd never be a train driver. He'd be making wire for the rest of his life. Yes. Um, they all then have to be gauged off that middle piece there. Right. So, so until those two are in at 650... You can't do the rest. You can't do the rest. Got it. And it would look completely wrong. And, and people would pick it up straight away. Because people would say, they won't pick up the difference of 150 mil from five or six feet away. Mm -hmm. But they will pick up where something's wrong. Yes. So, so that's why, you know, I, it's one of those things that everyone comes up with a great idea every now and again, and everybody goes, so how are you going to take it apart then? Ah. Well, why? Well, where are you going to put the container in there? Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, right. And that's that's the added multi complexity multiplier of having a layout that you pick up and take somewhere. It certainly is, yeah. Not like plummet in forever and don't have to worry about these sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. I have to say, though, I mean, I built layouts all my life. I absolutely... I built more layouts that I transport than I have them fixed. Right. And I have to say, I've enjoyed... I, built, I enjoy building exhibition layouts far more than I do... I built Acton back in 1970. Mm-hmm. Uh, in four mil, uh, well, it was EM actually, and I took it to a couple of shows. It was a mixed gauge, Great Western mixed gauge. Became quite quite well known on the circuit, and I took it to quite a few shows. Mm -hmm. And then I bought um, the house I lived in in Coventry, and a, there was a farm behind me, and he was he he'd given up dairy, so I bought the cow shed that was actually at the bottom, of, you know, my garden. Mm -hmm. I bought a piece of land off him with a cow shed on it, and I turned the cow shed into a model room, you know, into right. a layer, and I put Acton in there. Mm. And I never finished it. I never, ever, ever finished it. I just, 
it. I don't know. When it was mobile, you know, you're driven by. You've got to get it finished. Yeah. When it's when it's yours in your your house, it can go forever. Yeah, you, you're lazy and you, mm. you you don't make decisions. Well, you are working to a timetable here, though, aren't you? Your schedule. Oh, yeah. There's nothing See, like pressure. Nothing like pressure. I've just here. What am I doing? Red, black, black. Where the fucking? Where's this one? That's red. Oh, all right. I'm sure. I've got to talk to myself. Like me. I thought I'd lost a red. I have the best conversations when I'm the only one in the room. It's when your answer is your problem, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I got to, I, I'd lost a red, but I realised I'd, I'd been smart and kept it tight. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So we're at Chester, end of July. This yeah, year. so th th this year's biggest problem, mm -hmm. and, and you know, we keep avoiding it, but I can't avoid it because I'm constantly having to deal with it. You're not making two, one layout. Mm -hmm. you've, got to, you've got to think of two more shows, but the second, the second show, but there's possibly a third show for Christmas where you're looking at using all three layouts. Mm -hmm. Well, best part, you can't mm -hmm. use Kevin Viaduct. That'll never go out again. That's finished. So you're losing 16 feet off the original layout, but you're putting this year's 64 feet with making tracks to 64 feet for definite those two, and the rest of uh, making tracks one to go from Rugby to Watford. Right now, you'll get. We're all stuck in on this, mm. right? But Phil and I are also having to work out how this all fits in. How much you've got to change the other one? So yep. Phil's got to rewire all those boards to make them, to make up them to compatible mm -hmm. to this one. Uh, I've got to match the ends of the tracks up, um, make sure that it all works. We have to bring some of the scenery from making tracks one up to making tracks two and three standard. Mm. Um, there's no way that we can put this layout up before Milton Keynes. Right. So Milton Keynes, you know, you go in with a wing and a prayer and hope that it works. And a baptism of fire. Well, you've got three layouts that technically work. Right. Individually. Individually. Your test is put them together, plug them in, and can you get the electricity to work over 154 feet? Because you can't see 154 feet. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's the one known, or one fact that we do know, is that you will not be able to see a train from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to walk or you're going to get somebody else to walk because you ain't got a choice. So you've got the conversation about how you're going to operate. So what will you do? Will you decide how to operate and then build it around that? No, we've got to build it. What's built? Okay, I mean, That's the point, isn't it? That's the, control, the, point. the control of it. No, the control, we can't... We've, we've discussed this. We, you, we can't... We've got to go the simplest route. Mm -hmm. The signals will all work properly, mm. but the controller will have to be in control. Right. So he will have to be supervised. If he's not one of the operators and it's one, one of the guests that have got a controller, he right. will have to be supervised. Right. Because there's no way we can put in the block detection that we put in mm. uh, on, on making tracks too. As yes. much as it looked great, yes. it was about as good as the chocolate banana for the kids. They weren't interested. Yeah, in nobody it. was looking no, at it. No, nobody looked at it. I mean, it was like, you just so you just say, well, well, forget that. Let's go and work out, you know, practical stuff that looks perfect. So there, we will, there will be track circuits on the front yes. that we can see, but the back, you'll just... Just forget it. Stop, switch yeah. off. Uh, you know. That's technology gone mad, isn't it? Yes. I mean, one of the things we're looking at is all our new boards have uh, radio built in, Bluetooth yeah. and Wi-Fi. So we've turned the Wi-Fi off at the moment, but when it gets to a point where we think it's reliable enough, we will introduce that, and there's potentially another bus you don't need. Yeah, and um, but yes, and that's and that's if you play it's your layout. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, and you've got all operators. It's when you hand that controller to somebody who doesn't know the system. Mm. You're adding a massive complication. Right. From the control aspect, it won't you won't be able to tell which what it's using. It's the same. Right. It's just you see, I'm I'm conflicted 
I like the convenience of the radio, but it opens the system up to all sorts of other problems from, you know, hacking to denial of service and anything else. Right. And it's how reliable, robust and resilient all that is. And, and how many people are using radio in the building at the time? Yeah, exactly. And at the cathedral, there were so many networks in use, they were all overlapping. Were they really? Yeah, they were. We, we scanned it and there was not a free channel on the Wi-Fi. I mean, there isn't where I live. There's, there, every single channel is occupied really? by more than one thing. You wouldn't think that, would you? But, you know, in, like, in, I think in the cathedral, they had three cathedral Wi-Fi networks for different reasons. So <laughs> Probably that's, didn't even know they got three, by the way. <laughs> but on the 2.4 gig band, that's the entire band in use. You know, there's no, no empty channels. So when you were operating the handsets, you were on a channel with, with another network. Right. So there's a conflict there. But it works. There's ways around it. It's a question of whether we can make it robust and simple. Because what you can't do is have someone go in and type a lot of stuff in to configure something technical. At the end of the day, they want to play trains. Yeah. And uh, so you get the you could have the convenience of Wi-Fi at home where it doesn't your layout doesn't go on the road. But that's probably the least likely place you need it because you don't care about two more wires on a built-up layout in the in the house. Right. But on the road where you've got a bus potentially that you don't need, that's a great saving. Yeah. Yeah, I can uh, see that. If it can be made reliable enough. Yeah, I can see that. And we've been testing now for 18 months. I've got a, I've got a radio on some boards that can go 13 kilometres. 13 kilometres? Yes. Wow. Um, yeah, but you, you, were, you were into modern aircraft, weren't you? Yeah. And so all this is sort of second-hand to you, really. Well, you're amateur way radio ahead of us. before that. Yeah, so, so I used you're to way ahead of us. get my shortwave radio and talk to the world. Yeah. yeah so now, you're, yeah, you're way ahead of us. I've had a new central heating boiler fitted last week and the thermostat on that is wireless and when i looked at the spec it's using similar frequencies to those i was using on my 13 kilometer radio really so i put a video up of me walking all around the garden about five six hundred meters yes. testing buttons and, and seeing them you know talk and handshake but it's it's about standards compliance as well it's very boring for somebody who just wants to drive his trains around his track but Getting it, the thing is, if you get it right, it works. No one cares. If you get it wrong, that's it, isn't it? You know, your 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 name is mud. One thing that I I find, Dave, it's it's it's, and I noticed this from some of the YouTubers videos I watch. Everybody get, they get carried away with the technical aspects of things. Yeah, and they miss the whole sort of ethos of what a model railway is. And if you want to build clever stuff, go into amateur radio. You know, go, oh. go into some, where you go and buy a, a, a radio control plane. You don't build it, you buy it. And the joy is working it and making it work. Mm. Surely the joy in model railways is actually modeling and playing. I, I have two schools of thought. One is the modeler and the other is the train set. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And oh, I, no, no, absolutely that, yes. And I put myself in the train set category because I like to operate them yep. and everything came out of a box. Right. I have no problem with that at all. Uh, I know some people do, but I don't because that's how I started. Right. And, you know, now... So when when people like Rod com, com, don't like to have his compared with the train set... Mm. I understand that philosophy because he's put so much work in. Yeah. And he, and he spent so much time getting it perfect. So I get that. But I'm not worried that the general pub public, who probably come and go in 30 seconds, mm. think it's a train set. It's, right. It yeah. doesn't offend me. Because it's like, I can't be asked to explain to them that it's not a train set. Yeah. And so, you know, I think one of the problems we've got at the moment with, with, the br brilliance of having, you know, shows on television showing modelling. Mm. Yes. They just want to show we're nerds. Mm. They just want to show... Um, you can get more rivets on a plate than someone else. Or... Yeah, or, or, you know, you know, or old farts like me can't deal with technology. Well, that's not true, because we've been... I've been 3D printing for 27 years. Mm. So, you know, all, all this where suddenly... Everybody's talking, well, they think... I. 
Well, I think just like the real thing was. We were yeah. 3D printed 30 years ago. Yeah. You know? um, we didn't shout about it because it, it's, it's not important. China was doing it, we were doing it. That's how you do things. But now everyone's going, oh, Christ, you know, this guy's 3D printed carriages. Yeah, I did that 30 years ago. You know, even it, that's moved on now. There's new technologies. Yes. You know, and I, I stand next to people like you and Phil, and you just stagger me with your, you know, with your use of technology, which is, <laughs> which, let's be honest, we all benefit from. Mm. You know, everybody in the hobby benefits from somebody else's step forward. Well, like on my desk, I've got five generations of System 2 board that all use something different to communicate. A different radio frequency, uh, different wires, uh, whatever. So they all use different things and it's, if you don't try them, you don't know that they work and you don't know what sticks and what isn't. And I think like the long range radio would be great for someone with an outdoor layout, maybe a, a five inch or seven and a quarter. Well, of course, the radio control guys have been around a long time yes. on, the on the railway scene, and they're quite vociferous as well, by the way. Mm. They are quite, um, we're all wrong and they're right because you don't have to clean the track. Uh, and, and it is clever, and it's been around at least... You're talking about radio control of locos? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least, I went to Bob Heads, that's got me 30 years ago, and Bob's people had it then. But to me, it was a lot of trouble when cleaning the track was quicker. Yes, right. And it, and it added another complication. See, in those days, obviously, gauge, we were gauge one. You had to build everything in gauge one. Yes. So you've not only just got the problem of building the local, you're adding another, you know, you're adding another problem. And you think, well, Christ, can't be asked to do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking hard enough building the loco yeah. without adding, you know, three other, three other problems. But, and, and I, I just find 3D uh, laser cutting now is so widely available and there's so many people and you can buy such cheap machines, right? Excuse me. But you're still only as good as the guy that draws the program. Yeah, absolutely. And I see all these buildings come out and yeah. they are rank. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're cut. It's a cube with windows or... Something. You know, you go, but the engines, they, they don't match, they mm. don't fit, yeah. they're not architecturally correct. Mm. Now, just one second, let me just... Do you want me to get it? Oh, well, I can do, say, 2D, I can do 2D and I'm, I'm learning 3D mm. and, and, and I, can, I can get around the problems, um, which is great. And you, you, you know, you end up with a, a laser cut building, but it's nothing like what an architect would do. And you go, yeah, but I did it myself. Yeah, but with a little bit more time and a bit more, you know, a bit more mm. research, you would have got it right. Yeah. But they don't seem to want to do that. And they, you see stuff on, on, on particularly on, on YouTube, and you look at it and you go, that's wrong, yeah. Whoa. No. I do. I see videos now, and I think the advice I've just been given is wrong. I know it to be incorrect, um, but you know, I'd ra rather than shout at somebody, you just move on to the next video. Well, you do. <clears throat> You're absolutely true. You do. But I mean, it's like it's the old thing I learned in the record industry very early. You know, you know, when my my son went to, to college and. Uh, you know, he came to me and he said, no, Dad, I'm not learning anything. I want to come and work for you. Mm. You know, there are people that do it mm. and there are people that talk about it and there's teachers that teach it. Um, so it, it's... What I, what I really like is... I love the Hornby. You know, the, the reason I went and did this whole sort of... Um, layout at Cathedral was because I could see that I could buy four mil stuff that was good enough to put straight on the layout. I wouldn't have done that 20 years ago. And it clocks up some miles, doesn't yeah. it? 20 years ago, I wouldn't have even considered hmm. doing it because 
A, the quality of the product wasn't there, and you couldn't have, you couldn't have run it for seven weeks. It was it would have been impossible. But now, you know, it, it was quite confident. I went to Simon and said, you know, this is what the cathedral wanted to do. Do you do you want to be involved? And there was no, you know, there was no hesitation. Mm. Um, and I think that these, you know, where we've got to. Um, the problem is, I think, when we start to bring in people from outside to see what we do as a hobby, we get confused. Yes, well, 10 people have 10 opinions, don't they? I think we get confused. Or 11. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that, you know, we're now seeing on, on, on the Yesterday channel is like, is, what are you trying to prove? That we're all mad? Well, we know we're all mad. You don't have to prove that. Job done, yes. You know, uh, but we're we're mad with a purpose, if you like, and uh, I don't know. Do you know when the new series goes out that uh, you filmed? We're still waiting for one one more. Ep we've still got to make one more episode. Right. Um, yeah, we've got one more episode to film because. Can we talk about this on camera? Yeah. Okay. Well, all I can say is. One of the the art one of the people we were gonna oh, I love this look book of um, one of the people we were gonna it, it was in the series as as backed out and left us with a hole right so this the, the series should be six episodes and at the moment we've only fi filmed four so we're trying we're trying desperately to get one more person um, and we're talking to two or three at the minute so uh, who have you filmed who's in it can you say at this point Eddie Izzard right uh, James May right uh, Jules Holland yes and me right and then um, one still hasn't said no he's not, but they're on tour at the minute right um, so we have to wait and see where, where that one goes mm. um and one who said yes has now decided they're going to do their own t uh, television show. So, you know, can't stop them doing that, can I? Nope. But the hobby is getting exposure, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the problem, I think, and I, and I, and I, I say this with a reservation, I think that... Television naturally looks at things sometimes very different from that we look at things. And I think that um, my programme is about the hobby. It's about why people are passionate about it. Right. And, and their passion and, um, you know, and, and everything, everything to do with passion. Hmm. You know, standing on your head ain't what it's all about to me. Right. You know, or collecting, you know, you've been collecting for 50 years, you've got 7,000 models in your roof. You know, you go, yeah, yeah, interesting. Another part of the hobby, I don't have a problem. Um, but, you know, you could do a pro Collectors are collectors, aren't they? I mean, yes. you know, all collectors, we're a strange breed of people that collect. But you can't really pin down why you collect something, you know. I mean, you might as well do a programme on beer mats, might you? People collect beer mats, for God's sake. Yep. And there's no wrong with that, I mean, you know, I once collected matchbox tops, I think, if I remember right, when I was a kid. Don't you collect gold discs? Well, I gave that up. I take too much space up. Um, no, I think that um, it's good we've got all these programmes. Uh, but uh, the danger is, I think, that television sees them slightly different from we do. Hmm. And, you know. In what way do you think they see, see it differently? How, how does it differ? Well, I find it very amazing that, the, 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 I mean, I've worked in television for 40 years. Yeah. So I know television backwards, and, hmm. you know, particularly reality TV, because we started it. OK. So, um... <laughs> When, particularly at the cathedral, 
When I got, we got cameramen there, mm. and when they come, they're staggered. They go, my God, this is unbelievable. And they spend hours talking about how unbelievable it is. And they're genuinely, genuinely excited and interested in what you're doing. Right. You don't see that when it, gets, when it comes off the cutting room floor. Because all that's dropped. All that's gone. And that's gone because the editors and the producers or directors are not interested in, in what the cameraman and those people are seeing. They're interested in what the television audience they think want to see. Right. And there's a big difference. Mm. And I've lost my... Oh, there it is. I suppose the, the difference as well is it's a general viewing audience, not necessarily of radio modellers, uh, of railway modellers. No, and I get that. I don't, don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing, you know, I'm not worried about that. But I mm. think that genuinely, from, from, again, when people come here, you know, we have people, you know, that we are open to... The, we allow, you know, we're a charity, so people come in and we want them to come in and, mm. and see what we do. Right. And they're genuinely overwhelmed by it all. And it's, they just, it staggers them the, the amount of trouble and detail we go to. And, and that's got to, you know, people that come here are no different from the people watching at home, are they? No. So, you know, they come, you know, did you see that guy who's building this? You know, the fourth bridge across his land. It's interesting. Yeah. But then they show you just the bit where it falls apart. Right. They don't show you the bit where he, he puts it in and they go, wow, look at that. They go the bit where he, he puts a scalpel through his finger or, it, mm. you know, and you go... The highlight for <laughs> the audience. Yeah. Blood and go. It's, it's, it's a high-risk hobby. We have a problem in, in reality television, um, and it's called the water cooler moment. Right. And everybody's looking for that water cooler moment. It's that O.J. Simpson moment. Right. And it really doesn't exist. I can't forget that. I was in L.A. at the time that was happening, watching it on TV yeah. from the hotel. And that's what television mm. yeah. has always tried to create ever since. Right. And they didn't create that. It was a natural event. Yes. And, you know, you know, Pop Idol and, and, and programmes like that, mm. you, do, you don't create those water cooler moments. They just happen. They it? happen.